Happy Tuesday, everybody. I am so happy you guys are back to join me and Joy. Um, we're just happy you guys are back with us. Yeah, anytime. Uh, yes. Uh, we just enjoy doing these things, and this makes us so happy um, to share all this information with you so we can help you and your bunnies. Um, to get started, please, please go on there, like, follow, and share. I went back on and I was looking and I looked and it says I invited you, but you haven't clicked on the invited to make sure it's liked. So I invited all of you, but you haven't clicked the invite to make it official. So go on there and click it. Um, even some of our members have not clicked it. So all of the members need to go click that button and make sure you have liked our page and follow our page and share it, please. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, also, please tell us where you're watching us from in the comments. Joy and I love, love to know where you're watching us from. That's a lot of fun, yes. We, yes. Her and I always go through it afterwards. Um, it's a big deal for us. Um, and other than that, I think we'll get started. Yep. Okay. So you'd let them know what our topic is for tonight? Um, I did in the comments. Um, tonight we are going to tell you how to find a good bunny vet. Right. Which is... Well, it's very important for, you know, no matter where you're at, it's extremely important to have a veterinarian who is truly trained on rabbits. And it's better to have one before yes. you have an right. emergency. So you want to know ahead, again, ahead of time, because if your bunny is really, really sick and you don't have a veterinarian lined up, you have nobody to call. Um, and, and if you are just trying to get somebody who's open, they may not really know anything about rabbits. Um, it's just a really, really vital issue that you do have somebody who knows about that. Um, you know, this is really, really not, again, a, a slam against the veterinary schools or anything by any stretch, but they really don't have time to train on subjects like rabbits, okay? When you attend veterinary college, it's basically large animal school, small animal school, and small animals means cats and dogs, okay? And it, there are so many different breeds of dogs and cats out there too, the different issues. It takes a long time. So I really compare it to like human medical school. When you graduate from human medical school, you do not graduate as a brain surgeon, heart surgeon, pediatrician. You graduate as a general practitioner. And if you want to go on and be an oncologist, orthopedic, any other field, you have to go into that field, continue your training, get your board certification in that field, okay? And the um, veterinarians, you know, um, when they go through school, they only get about two hours worth of information on rabbits, okay? And yet there's no legal restraint, I should say, you know, from them seeing anything. Once they have their DVM, they can pretty much see, you know, anything. And, uh, you know, most of them do, you know, take additional training. Uh, there's all kinds of conferences and things like that. But a lot of times the rabbits do get overlooked or the pocket pets. And yet, you know, people will, they will be seen and yet they may not know anything at all about something like bladder sludge. Cats and dogs don't have bladder sludge, okay? Uh, they may not know anything about an impacted cecum because the dogs and cats don't have an impacted cecum. All of these different things, you know, uh, rabbits, their teeth grow their entire lifetime. Dogs and cats are like us. They have baby teeth and permanent teeth. So again, all of these things do not translate to rabbits. So you have to have somebody who actually has taken the time to learn specifically about rabbits. Um, one of the things that uh, there's a, a really good place to go to is uh, rabbit.org. That's the National House Rabbit Society. And um, we have um, a lot of different you know, places on there. So wherever you're at in the country, um, we have a few internationals on there. Mostly this is within the United States where you can go on there and try to find uh, good veterinarians, you know, uh, that are recommended by your local house rabbit chapters or local uh, rescues, you know, in your area. Because certainly, like here locally, we know about places around here, but we don't know, right. you know, who's a good veterinarian in New York City. I would be going to the house rabbit site in New York City and who's, who's a good vet there, you know. Mm -hmm. So that type of thing. Then they've got, you know, 
Um, when you're actually, you know, at the veterinarian, just say, okay, your veterinarian sees rabbits and um, actually I need to go, I meant to bring over my little tools over there. So while we're showing the um, video, I will go ahead and, and get those and uh, show you. But there's a really good article in there, um, you know, in the, on uh, rabbit.org on, you know, how to, you know, find a good veterinarian. And so the, uh, and of course, you know, looking at that is there. So um, one of the things, you know, the screening thing, and I'm just kind of going to go quickly through these, it says ask how many rabbits are seen at the clinic each week, okay? Ask how many rabbits are spayed or neutered each week. That gives you kind of a good idea of what, how many rabbits they really see. And if they only see one rabbit a month, they're probably not very experienced at rabbits, no matter how much, you know, they want to be, okay? Um, ask whether the animals, they, the rabbits they see, if they're show animals, stock animals, or mm -hmm. companion animals, okay? Again, makes a really, really big difference. The person who's reading their, breeding their rabbits for meat are not likely to be interested or care if that rabbit is sick. Mm -hmm. They're not going to put that kind of money into it because they can't recoup it. So it's just, okay. These, again, you know, some of these sad things are simply reality, you know, okay. Uh, so you want a veterinarian who is trained on companion rabbits, okay? Um, why well, ask what kind of a diet the veterinarian advises their clients to feed their rabbits? Uh, if you're really up on what a good veterinarian or a good diet is, you're going to know whether they're giving you good information or not. Yeah. Uh, ask if they know which antibiotics are dangerous, you know, dangerous for rabbits. There are some antibiotics out there that are deadly toxic for rabbits. You know, I had one poor lady come in one time. And, you know, and she said, oh, no, no, I have a very good rabbit vet. He, he tried so hard to save our bunny. And I said, what was wrong with her? And she said, well, she had an upper respiratory infection. I'm like, well, those are serious because like horses, they're nasal obliquot breathers. They can't breathe through their mouth. So a sinus infection is serious, but usually if we give them the right kind of antibiotic, we can clear it up. What, what did he give her? Well, it was something called clindamycin. Okay, um, safe for dogs, safe for cats, safe for humans. Deadly toxic for a rabbit, okay? It's like dead in 48 hours. And, you know, the poor woman is now devastated, you know, and, you know, because she gave this medicine to her bunny, you know. And it's like, yeah, you really, really do need somebody who is honestly trained on rabbits, okay? So, um, ask what they recommend to their clients to prevent uh, GI stasis, gastrointestinal stasis. Stasis is a really big issue for rabbits, okay? So one of the top things that, you know, veterinarians see if they are really seeing your know, rabbits yes. is, you know, my rabbit's not eating. Okay, now what is the problem? Because there can be multiple problems too. It's not just a matter of, you know, oh yeah, go force feed the rabbit. No, 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 no. Wait, what if there's a blockage in there? And the blockage could be between the stomach and then the intestinal tract because it's got a you know, spot like this to go through. It could be big gas bubbles in there. Uh, there could be a true blockage you know, way down in the intestinal tract. Uh, so there's all these different things and methods for dealing with this. Again, you have to have somebody who truly knows what they're doing, okay? You never um, force feed without an x-ray. Oh my gosh, you know. It, just so you all know. <laughs> please, okay, and I did have somebody tell me that just yesterday that their veterinarian recommended that they actually had them come up and get the stuff to force feed their bunny. Did not see the bunny, did not x-ray the bunny, just go ahead and it's like, nope. okay. Fortunately that, you know, it did not harm her rabbit, but <sighs> oh my goodness, you know. So, um, and again, you know, there are specific, you know, issues, um, and there, so before you can criticize anybody entirely, you know, you would really need to know, like, the entire conversation right. between, you know, the client and the veterinarian, because, again, if they don't tell us all the information, we yep. could be missing a pertinent piece of information, yeah. So, uh, so again, we're not trying to be critical, we're just trying to say we really encourage you getting somebody who is truly trained, okay. Um, ask whether they routinely give, you know, analgesics after surgical procedures. If yes, what do they use? Uh, this is a good one. If food has to be removed the night before surgery, because even us, you know, you know, no, no food after midnight, nothing after, you know, no, 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 rabbits need to keep their gut in motion 24 hours a day. Which is and, a big one. I get that on um, Facebook Messenger all the time, yeah. um, is they will message me and say, well, my vet said... I need to take the food away at midnight, right. and, and like I'll that. say, no, no, no. "Don't take your bunny to that vet." Right. 
Right. Uh, unfortunately, the, now here's a couple of issues. One, their gut does need to be kept in motion. And, you know, two, you know, you don't want their gut really emptied out because they're going to feel poorly after the surgery. So you want some still food, you know, circling, you know, through that gut until they start, you know, eating up again a little bit. And rabbits cannot vomit, okay? The reason why you are not supposed to, humans, dogs, cats, uh, are supposed to be, you know, um, no food, you know, after midnight or water type of thing is simply because... We could get sick during surgery mm -hmm. and then literally, you know, asphyxiate from that. Gross, but that's exactly what goes on. Mm -hmm. So that can't happen with the rabbit. So they don't need to be fasted. That's the, you know, the bottom line. Um, so all of these things, you know, are simply going on. But there's a lot of, you know, stuff here. And so um, I do have a video that I'm going to show you of a um, the um, exam being done. And in fact, I'm going to have Bobby hold it up. Uh, so that you can see it and then I'm going to go back over some of the things that you know because there's some additional things that are occurring there now um, you know you're dealing with somebody who is way past the age of being really up on everything you know this time and I just got this video this afternoon so it's still on my phone uh, so you'll end up having to see it from there and let's see okay uh, so we want to get And I need to make sure we are okay. All right, you want to hold that up really yeah. close? Okay. So I'm gonna. This is Nietzsche. She Oops. is found loose. I'm gonna oops, start it from there and pause it till I get up there. Okay. So I'm gonna stand mm. up so you guys can see it right. good. Put that up there. And I apologize, it's on the phone. We just didn't have time to download it. But this is at Hope Animal Hospital. This is where we take all of our rescue bunnies. And Dr. B is the vet there, and she is the one doing um, the health check exam. Oops. Who is this? This is Mitra. She right. was found loose and she was covered with ticks. All right, let's start with the weight. I will add to make it easier for them. 3.36. 3 3 3 3 3 so, in general, I start. So she's thin. I can feel hip bones. I can feel ribs. So I know she's thin. And then, um, yes, yes. so I start. I'm looking at the front teeth. Well, you may have to hold uh -huh. these. Oh, I know. There they are. They look fine. My back the color's nice and pink. Not tolerated. And look at her front Sorry. legs to see if there's any discharge she's been cleaning. She has a little bit of uh, rough fur here, so she may have been cleaning something off of her face. I know. She hasn't had an exam before, so she doesn't know. This one looks quite clear. So a lot of rabbits don't like this, but I feel the jaw because that's an area where they can get abscesses, so we need to catch those early. And there's none. So, I do want to look at her nose because she has so she has no white discharge. I don't see anything. Her face is kind of dirty. It may be because she's outside, but I make note of that. She had several ticks on her nose. Okay. <laughs> that might explain both her foot and that. So I look at her eyes. Everything looks fine there. That from the scope of book two. So she's been very good. Alrighty. So then I begin on the ears by just looking at them in general. Um, if they have really severe ear mites, I may not be able to do anything more than that because it's so painful for them. And then I look down. 
don't see anything. Alright, so we'll request. I want to check out further. Step. I think she's got scabs all over her. So listen to her heart. Then her lungs. She both sounds good. So you can hear the heart on one side more than the other sometimes, and that create that's because there's a tumor in the way. Um, you can sometimes not hear the heart very well because there might be a tumor in the way, so there's a lot to hear the also. So then I feel, to make sure everything's, she's eating well because her stomach's full, so she's been eating since I got her. <laughs> All right, I feel to make sure everything's okay. We look here, and if I do have some stool, I'll look at it while it's here. Um, that's pretty small for the size bunny. Um, it maybe she just hasn't had a nutrition yet. So we move up with the thermometer. I know. And it is a girl. And very fast thermometers here. Temperature's normal. I look at her hocks to make sure there's no hock sores. There's some calluses, but there's no sock sores. So I look, and I also will feel a push on them to make sure there's not painful. And she's been outside, so her feet are really dirty. <laughs> yes. So I don't recommend people do this at home, but when I put my finger here, there's no teeth. So the teeth, you can see are way back there. I can feel them here. Put my fingers on no teeth. Um, and then you have the front teeth. So the teeth in the back is what she choose hay with. So I have this nasal speculum. So this is going to move the cheek and the tongue away and provide light for me to see the back teeth. She's allowing me to see them. And they look great. And that looks good too. So, um, and some of the bigger rabbits, or one that may be painful or something, it may take longer for me to get a good exam. And that's your rabbit exam. So she's thin. And this one is also going to get blood work because of being outside with the ticks and being thin. So that will, we're not going to show that on film, okay. but it's something that we do recommend uh, on at least a semi-annual basis, if not annual basis. Okay, so a couple of things that I do want to go over, and uh, we've got one other thing here really quickly. I'll just go over some of the comments real okay. quick. Um, I had a lady... Um, which is one of our loyal um, watchers, Miss um, Hill. She said our vet is very thorough. And yes, Dr. B is very, very thorough on all of her exams. Um, I can't say enough good things about Dr. B. Um, she has saved so many of our bunnies, my personal bunnies, um, she is very, very thorough on all of uh, the all of the animal exams. Honestly, um, she has caught things right when they start. Um, we just love her. So, yeah, she's a really good she's a really good bunny vet. All right. Okay. <sighs> Sorry, trying to get too many things. Yeah, you know, because it looks like the exam was just actually done a very short time ago and trying to get her back in here and get her settled and everything. And then trying to get ready for the class, okay, or the show. <laughs> so anyway, uh, some things I wanted to kind of touch base on, because uh, while she was talking and she did mention a lot of things, there were things that she didn't mention that was actually going on at the same time. So when a veterinarian is really good 
and know what they're doing. You know, they will see things and you won't even notice what's going on. Mm -hmm. So for example, when she had that bunny down here, she was also noticing that at least, say the genital area, looked okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she was noticing that the toes were not swollen, mm -hmm. okay? So all of that, she was seeing that the underside still looked okay. Again, every time her hand touches that bunny, where there's lumps, bumps, then she, then she would catch it, okay? Now she's not saying anything as long as there is nothing, nothing. going on. Yeah. But if there was something, you know, like she mentioned, no one's going under the jaw and trying to find abscesses or anything like that. Uh, but her hands are telling her the same thing all over mm -hmm. that entire bunny's body. So when they look at that fur and, you know, they're looking to see, you know, for fur mites, they're looking to see if there's any, you know, uh, bad skin issue or is skin disease, you know, uh, if there's cuterebra, okay. We have another class on that, you know, until, um, you know, it's a parasite. It's very large, you know, it starts out, you know, very tiny, gets underneath the surface of their skin. It's a whole process, but anyway, they grow very large. They can get up to the size of my thumb, mm -hmm. and they're discussing. They have that to be surgically so removed. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, they have to be surgically removed. But again, those things, you know, because she was outside, so like I said, she's not mentioning those things because she's not finding them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you notice, the veterinary technician was also helping because she didn't she, oh, I feel all these little scabs there. Mm -hmm. Well, those were all those tick bites that I mentioned because everywhere, in fact, if you felt that poor bunny's ears, you could just feel everywhere there had been a tick bite and there was no longer a tick. Mm -hmm. But we had taken off quite a few, you know, of her. And so, um, which is something I really quickly want to mention. Um, Hopefully your bunny is not outside, but Revolution, uh, which is typically for cats and dogs, is something that we can use on bunnies, you know, normally for fleas, the fur mites and ear mites, but they now have Revolution Plus, and that will handle, I think, six different kinds of ticks. So, you know, just a little which FYI. Which is really there. good. Yes, you know. So anyway, so along with, you know, with that, uh, you know, that um, exam that she was talking about, so and she mentioned, you know, so just some different things. So first of all, an otoscope, okay? Um, they should, again, not just peer into the look of the ear. She looked, you know, but then she used the otoscope for going down in the ear. So when ear mites are, you know, basically microscopic. So unless you can get down there and really see them, you might not catch that they're starting. Or an ear infection, that canal is really deep. So it's not just looking in there. You, they really have to get down in there with an otoscope to really see what's going on, okay? The ophthalmoscope, uh, when she was looking at the eyes, basically we're looking to see that there's no infection, that there's no cataracts, um, you know, things like weepy eyes. Weepy eyes can be caused by about 10 different things. And so if there had been weepy eyes, now we would have been trying to figure out what was it? Was it an upper respiratory infection? Was it molar spurs? Was it an ear infection? You know, it could be blocked tear ducts. I mean, there's, it's about, like I said, about 10, 12 different things that weepy eyes can be caused by. So you have to have, again, somebody who knows what they're doing so they're treating the you know, symptoms properly, okay? Uh, she mentioned this. This is a nasal valve speculum. It is a human device, okay? And um, again, the veterinarians who, you know, they have to get creative just like we do with a lot of this stuff. And so this is actually meant for up your nose, your type of thing. So, but for the bunnies, like you said, it really works really well because it's got a light on there. It's able to then push the tongue aside, the cheek aside, and she can check all four arcades of back teeth really quickly. Mm -hmm. And you know, and so um, the let's see, doo -doo -doo, okay. Um, and if you've ever watched yes. your vet do it, which. It takes like it takes about five minutes because they're so quick at what they're doing. Yeah, but I get to like I'm nosy, and yes. I've known Doctor B for a really long time, so she kind of lets me get in there and look, and I've got to watch it. It's amazing what you get to see. They can see all the way in the back, and it's really neat to see your right. bunny's teeth. So. Next time you're in there, just ask if you can take a peek in there. It's really yeah. interesting. So the you know, the um, you know uh, so we need here. So we got there. They're coming in with us all the time. Okay, but you can get one of these at home too. Now she mentioned about you know the heart. You could hear the heartbeat. It's not going to probably tell you anything unless you're a medical professional. Okay, other than the heart's beating. Um, same thing for the lungs. You know they listen to the lungs. But uh, unless, you know, there's something really drastically going on, you, know, you can't always tell if there's something going on in the lungs other than it sounds clear at the time. But what you can use this for Which is, I have one and I use it go. for that reason. What? 
To hear if the gut's moving. There you go. Okay. And their gut has to be in motion 24 hours a day. And so, now, if you can literally hear it without a stethoscope, uh, that gut, there's probably too much gas in there because, I mean, that, that loud gurgling and sound, you should that, not be able to right. hear it. And I've had a bunny that was, it just had tummy problems. Yeah. Um, and you could hear that. Yeah. So, you know there's a problem if you can just, you know, hear it. But the stethoscope is great because if you're not sure if your bunny does have, you know, um, a gut problem, you know, you, you definitely you know, want to you know, get it in there and there goes, okay, okay, okay. And, you know, get it under, you know, here. You want to listen for those gut sounds, okay? And if you don't hear any, now you've got a problem, okay? Yep. So, um, there's, uh, let's see, I wanted to, I was also, on my phone too. you should just get them and listen to your bunny so you know what it sounds like right. ahead right. of time so then you know when you have a problem so i'm going to show a couple of another couple of uh, uh, photos from my phone and i've shown them uh, i had pictures before but i didn't bring pictures with me here so if you can let's okay there we go all right now can you see that really sharp point down in there okay that is a molar spur, and every time that poor bunny tries to eat, it's like, bleep, 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 bleep. it hurts, and they're going to quit eating. They're not going to die of starvation. They're going to die of gut stasis when that gut stops moving. Because it points you know, it the, hurts. the okay. tongue, the okay. cheek. Ooh. And then, let's see, uh, this other one here. Okay, here again. Now, this one is an upper tooth. No, it's Okay. Now, can you see where the arrow is pointing? So how bad, and can you see how that point is gouging out the cheek? Ow! Okay, so again, that bunny has stopped eating for a very, very good reason. Okay? And I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to my teeth, I am a baby. Yeah. Oh, ooh. Yeah. And it I can't it take hurts. it. It just yeah. hurts. So they, they quit eating um, because of how bad it is. So it's really, really important, you know, for them to be able to see those back teeth, okay? Um, yeah, and that they are doing it properly because I, again, I've heard of some really bad ways of them trying to see back teeth and it's like, oh, would you, would you let that person do that to your dog? And it's like, well, no, if you wouldn't let them do that to your dog, don't let them do it to your bunny. Okay. Uh, she had mentioned hock sores. This is, was a really bad photo that I could find of hock sores. Am I getting in there? Okay. Can you see those sores on the feet? Okay. At the very bottom of the hock. That's where a lot of them occur. But this poor bunny has literally, you know, all over the front feet, the back feet, you know, all the toes are all because of being on, you know, wire floors. Uh, you know, so we certainly don't want them, you know, on a wire floor. And there's various, you know, so when you look at your own bunny, and we've done, we did that, you know, home bunny, you know, health check before, again, doesn't replace having them in the veterinarian. But you can catch things when you are doing that. When you are brushing that bunny, take advantage of, Oh, he doesn't want his ear touch, you know. Why is his head tilted? Why is the eye bulging? You know, why is there, you know, discharge here at the nose? All of those things, you know, get them into the veterinarian, okay? Yep. You are not a veterinarian. You need to make sure your bunny is being treated by somebody who knows what they're doing, okay? Um, but there's all kinds of things that, that you can always make sure. If you're not seeing the teeth, then they're probably okay. Rabbits do not regularly have to have front teeth trimmed. This no. is not something that, you know, oh, you're just going to... No, 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 no. They wear down their own teeth, okay? So just like your jaw sits, you know, this way, okay? Teeth in front of the other, they adjust the jaw in order to bite, okay? So those teeth are going to overlap a little bit. So malocclusion would be where the teeth are really growing past each other, uh, out of the mouth, you know, down over the mouth, up through the nose. I mean, there's all kinds of... Oh, we've got some really bad photos of those things. But just normal, it's just going to, the, you know, upper teeth are going to sit right in, you know, over the, the lower teeth. And, you know, so if you're not seeing anything bad there, that's probably okay. But you can't see those back teeth. Even with a big blown up photo, and I've got of that, of, of a bunny yawning, you can't see the back teeth, okay? And some so of the first back. signs are not eating hay. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, if your bunny don't eat hay, it's always a, I always say the first rule of thumb, a vet check. Mm -hmm. Just a health check to check those back teeth to make sure you don't have any dental problems going on. Right. And we really recommend every six months, okay? 
Um, those teeth can grow so quickly that I have another photo. I don't have it here with me right now. Well, I can but tell my story on my on little how smoky. Long. Go ahead. No, yeah. His front teeth, um, for two years, he had them trimmed once a week. That's how fast they grew. Mm -hmm. He was so used to getting them trimmed, he would go in and just sit there and open his front teeth. He would open his lips and just say, okay, trim them. He was so used to getting it done. And then Joy talked me in because I was scared to get them pulled. Mm -hmm. And Joy convinced me that that would be the best thing for him, um, that he could still be just fine. Um, so I went ahead and did it, and she was completely right. He was totally fine and didn't have to do it anymore. Um, just a couple little things I did by spoiling him. I, like, cut the little bark for him so he would pick it up with his lips and chopped up some lettuce, and he'd pick it up with his lips. That's all I had to do, though. Okay. But, but front teeth, you know, like I said, it was because they grow week. that, that was, like I said, once a, and that's, so, that's how fast those back teeth can grow. Yeah. Um, we had, you know, one bunny that the spike was so long that even though they could remove that spike, all the all four arcades of teeth were crooked. And there's no orthodontia for bunnies, no little bunny braces. So that's a lifetime issue. If that bunny had gone in on a six month checkup, they probably would have been able to, to the smaller spur, remove it and you know the bunny the rest of the teeth would have been yeah, fine. I also also rescued a bunny to where those back teeth grew over the tongue. Mm, yeah. And trapped the tongue and we kept hearing the smacking noise and it was drooling and instantly I knew it was teeth. <clears throat> Pat took it the very next day into Dr. B and was told that it, it was awful. Yeah, and no telling how long it had been like that. Yeah. And drooling is uh, is a very uh, prominent symptom. So if your bunny is drooling, um, just think about it. How much saliva you produce if your mouth is irritated? Okay, mm -hmm. so it's the same thing for them. And you might find crumbled food in their dish because they can't eat it properly. Uh, you know, with the bunny that has the front teeth removed because of that malocclusion. Yes, you're going to have to chop up their baby carrot or tear up their lettuce because they can't bite into anything. But on the other hand, they can do just fine. They can pick up their you know, well, it was, food. They can pick up yeah. their parsley. They can pick up their hay. It's, yeah. It was crazy because he could pick up hay and parsley. You mm -hmm. didn't have to do anything with right. it. Pellets. Um, and I just did like shaving of the bark because my bunnies are always spoiled. Um, the, really, okay. the only thing was just shredding up lettuce, you know, ripping mm -hmm. it. But other than that, that was it. It was they it. Were perfectly right. fine. And, you know, you didn't have to have that trim, you know, constantly. Right. And there was, so there was, the poor bunny didn't have that irritation in there. And so it's, it's not an easy process. Again, you have to have a veterinarian who has a lot of experience Correct. with rabbits. Um, and they, they even have to know, I mean, that mouth, okay, you know, dogs and cats, they can crank that mouth wide open. You can see the lift of the lips, the other teeth. But that bunny has got a mouth this big. And when they yawn, you know, it's only this big. And so now those, let's say those teeth are way, you know, into the, to the back. So they've got to know exactly how far to open that jaw, too, without breaking that jaw. You know, because that poor bunny now is he's under, you know, sedative, you know, so they can do his teeth. You know, bunnies aren't going to sit there and go, ah, for you, you know. Although but he uh, did. Yeah. your little guy yeah. did, but he I mean, did. as far as those back teeth, right? Are no, 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 no. It was so, front. Um, you know, so they're they're sedated you know, during the yeah <laughs> yeah for that dentistry. He was special. Yeah, well, uh, they, they all can be. Yeah, I knew another he, lady who, who he was special. Prior to this, you know, had her <laughs> bunny's teeth trimmed constantly, the front teeth, and she said it was really funny because she would tell people, you know, um, you know, oh, bad bunny. And he would, uh, you know, and <laughs> so he's open his mouth. And people are thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to bite me. And all he was doing was showing, because mm -hmm. she would tell him that to have him open his mouth and mm -hmm. show her his teeth. You know? mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, same thing. There'd be times when he'd come to her and open his mouth because like, hey, look, you yeah, know, he they're would. getting too long. Yeah, he so you would, did too? Every six days, I knew he had to go in. Like I had a standing appointment, but he would go and he'd open his mouth to me and show me. Yeah, yeah here's my teeth. I need it. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. No problem. They're so smart. I mean, it's just amazing how smart they really, really can be.
So, um, do we have any uh, any questions going on? Or um, let me go back and see. We had a lot of people watching tonight. Good. You know, again, please share because you know if you know anybody that has bunnies, you know, it's just a matter of getting that information out there. And I said, you know, we really, really encourage the veterinarians. You know, if any of you are out there watching. Um, learn I mean to get all the conference classes that you can get bunny people can be really passionate about their rabbits and you know I've known people to travel hours to get to a good rabbit veterinarian when their bunny was sick um, you know put in a lot of money trying to fix their bunny so I mean you, you know from the dogs and cats not everybody's going to be that way but it's you know it's amazing. It's amazing. It really is, you know. So we know people that drive three hours to right. come to Fenton yeah. to Doctor B to get right. their bunny treated, and they're they're interested. And we know there's there's interested about um, now before COVID hit, uh, I was actually asked to come down and do a class uh, for some students at Mizzou for veterinary classes, and this was a voluntary class. I don't think I'm not a veterinarian, but I have probably taken well over a hundred veterinary classes on rabbits. But at any rate, I had 51 students in my class, and it was actually the maximum they could fit in the room. So, and it was just a two-hour introductory class on rabbits and rabbit medicine type of thing. And it was just exciting to see that, you know, there are some out there. So we really need to have veterinarians who are interested in the bunnies because obviously we love them. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't love them so <laughs> much. And, you know, it's, we really want them to get the best care possible. I want to give a shout out to Miss Hill because she's so sweet to me and Joy. She thinks you and I are her heroes, which just gives me fuzzies. Yes, nice. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. She watches from Colorado every week for us. Um, and then we just have Karen who says she's her bunnies are on her way to get nail trims from us. Okay. We, we do free nail trims here for all of our members. And then um, Susan is watching from the Seattle airport because her bunny is boarding with us. Oh, okay. So um, bunny's doing fine. Yeah, her bunny's boarding with us, so she's watching from the airport. But other than that, everyone is just watching and taking in all the good information that they're they're getting. Okay. So that's really good. All so, right. like I said, rabbit.org. Um, just you know. How to find a good veterinarian is all you have to look up. It'll take you right to the article. You know, it gives you that information. But we do have one more question. Oh, okay. Um, my buns are starting. She said not a not a veterinarian question, but my buns are starting to chew on the corner of my living room. What's the easiest way to bunny proof an entire room? <laughs> okay. <sighs> bunny proofing the entire room. That is an entire separate subject, okay? But there so, are a few um, things really quick. Yeah. Um, for my suggestions, mm -hmm. it depends on how far you want to go. Um, for me, my house is all about my pets, so bunny proofing is easy for me. I take um, the grid panels and... Uh, I don't know if we have one here to show us an example. I don't know that we have one. It's like the shelving grid. Right. Um, it's usually about a 14 by 14. Yeah. I cable tie them together and I just put them all around a room so they can't get to the baseboards and chew. And I just put them all around the room and the bunnies cannot get to it. If I have a bunny that's going to be a stinker, and try to like pull at it. I'll put cardboard between the wall and um, right, the, you know, the, yeah, the baseboard and, yeah. the, and the grid. You know. And the grid, so then they can't get it right. at all. Now, digging, she mentioned digging. Get a heavy um, ceramic tile. You can find these at any of the you know home places, you mm -hmm. know, the hardware stores. Uh, you can get, um, you put it that in that corner. So now the bunny's got this ceramic tile to dig on. Cannot get to your carpeting. You know yeah. that's. You can take a really, really obnoxious perfume and a Q-tip. Okay, that's yeah. my favorite one. You say, and I always suggest that. Okay, because it we works. have something like five million receptors in our noses. They have a hundred million receptors in their noses. Okay. So you just go down on that, you know, baseboard or the wall or your chair leg, and it's kind of like touch, touch, 
touch, you're up there, they're down there, and you know, you don't smell it. You don't want to be stinking yourself out of the room. But the rabbit with their sensitive nose is kind of like, ew, okay, and they will avoid that, you know, particular area. So, you know, it's, it's just... Yeah, a really go, easy, easy thing to go do. Go to Dollar General or Dollar Tree and pick out the most stinkiest perfume you can find, and just get a little bit I, of spritz on it. Or you can use. Yeah, I don't use spritz. I always use just oh, the, the the because anytime you aerosolize something, you are liable to smell it. So I always use the Q-tip because I want to dry a plaid, okay. a plaid exactly where it is, and I don't want to smell it. I have okay. a really, really sensitive nose. And you know any type of strong odors really don't you know, get to me. So um, okay, you know, use the Q-tip. I've yeah. been telling everyone to spritz it. So I don't I'll have it. to do the Q-tip. Only one. the Q-tip, right? Because you don't have to do the whole thing. It's just like a touch, touch, you know, touch. If you really like to spoil your bunnies all, uh, take that corner, get a nice cardboard box, put a lot of shredded paper in there, or uh, the uh, craft paper, anything you can crinkle up and put it in there, and cut two windows in there, not a door, because remember, dad rabbits like to dig, so they can just send all of this stuff flying. But if they have to go in through a window, they can get in there, and they can dig in that cardboard box, and have some blast, okay? So it just depends on you, your situation, what you're trying to accomplish, um, you know, lots of things that you can ivory, do. Ivory, a bar of ivory soap. Mm -hmm. If they're chewing something, ivory soap it, and it's just like, unfortunately, right. like when you were young and you said something you weren't supposed to, and your <laughs> parents or grandparents put a bar of ivory soap in your mouth. Okay. Yuck! The bunnies are going to take a right. bite of it, say disgusting. I'm not going to chew that anymore, and turn around and go away. So now. I do want to bring out one quick question. The reason she said ivory soap, okay, is because it doesn't have any perfumes, dyes, or deodorants in it. So if the bunny does ingest it, it's not toxic and doesn't have a problem with it. So that's that's the whole reason why she's yes. mentioning and that specific brand. It has to brand. be the bar, though. Right, the bar, not the not the liquid. And it does work because um, my bunny decided it was going to start chewing my headboard on my bed, um, and it took a chunk out, so I ivory soaked it, and it never touched it again. So I've even ivory soaked wire. Um, try that. Or you can use, you know... Um, Split flexible tubing at yes. the home in the right. hardware store again that works really well on on that. I always tell mm -hmm. her to keep everything out of reach. Yes, but you you mentioning the headboard. I'm just um, story. I love to tell stories, you know, and, and this goes back I to a, a pair of bunnies <laughs> that I had. All right, I had this bunny, and he had been declawed on all four feet. Okay. I remember this bunny. Yes, you remember that bunny, and I had a leftover bunk bed from my boys. And this bunny could not be on a hard surface. So I put, um, you know, the hospital pads over this, the, the um, you know, mattress. And I just had, I used just those grids. He only had this little tiny thing because he couldn't jump out because his mm -hmm. feet hurt too badly. But it was on this nice soft surface. Well, one day I had to take a plumber upstairs to the master bathroom. And we're passing by the bedroom where this bunny was. And a guy looked. Is that a rabbit in there? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on. And he goes, oh my gosh, did that rabbit chew up that headboard like that? No, my kids did when they were teething. <laughs> True story. Okay. So, <sighs> yeah. Um, one thing I could not break um, my bunny from, it was my baby. Yeah. Um, was my husband, Frank. Um, my baby was extremely spoiled. I think he was the most spoiled bunny in the house. On the face of the earth. Period. Um, and... He was so jealous of my husband, and I always let him sleep in my bed, and he would pee on Frank's pillow every day, and I would wash the pillow before Frank would come home and put it back, so Frank never knew he was peeing on the pillow for a long time, this went on, and finally I just got so tired of it, I finally confessed to my husband. You're going to have to make nice with this bunny because he's been peeing on your pillow for so long and I'm tired of washing it. Um, and so he tried to make nice and he finally did and he stopped peeing on his pillow. That's all he had to do was make nice with right. my baby. Um, and then he was fine and never peed on his pillow again.
No. But they, they love their people, then, and they, you know, they can be, they can be protective of their people. Yeah, so. it was because he was right. sleeping next to me, and he didn't like okay. it. So we're getting close, close to our time to be. Uh, yeah, the, we uh, have to be done. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, we're both uh, bad about time. We are. Stories. So any other questions? Any questions nope. before we head out? All we're right. good. So, but okay. if you have one later, just drop it in the comments. Mm -hmm. I always go back and double check. Mm -hmm. Um, and we'll answer them for yes. you. And let us know where you're from. Like I said, we have a blast oh, going through there all the places. Yeah. All right. So let us know. Yep. See you and next please week. please share this. Please. Okay. We'll talk to you guys right. next week. Bye. -bye. Bye.